Hi, Felicia. I'm so excited to get to talk to you today. It's been almost a year since the BB25 finale. How has life been for you since leaving the Big Brother house? Um, honestly, I just kind of stepped back into my life. So pretty normal, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. You know, I've, I've, I'm just doing me. <laughs> so everything's been good. I mean, just, just acclimating myself back to what is normal, but I never felt like I really stepped out of normal. I'll just be honest. People recognize me from time to time when I go places, but aside from that, everything's still pretty much the same. I'm learning how to use social media better. You're doing a good job. <laughs> I'm so, working on it. <laughs> so the past year has flown by, but what's been the most challenging part of transitioning back to normal life after Big Brother? I think just trying to figure out how much of the how much of the how would I how how do I want to say this? How much of the aftermath of Big Brother I want to tap into? So in other words, do I want to try to establish a platform and and stay in front of people all the time? Or do I want to just be low key and go back to just selling real estate, and not even paying no attention? And I think that's been the hardest something, figuring out what my next step is. And what did you decide, obviously, to stay more involved? I I have tried to stay involved in the social media, learn it better learn to um, use these different platforms and, and mediums and figure out, you know, what can I do on TikTok? What can I do on 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 YouTube and, and Instagram? And then also learning um, as much as I try to be my candid self, you just have to stay away from certain topics and stuff because people just explode. They go haywire. And you realize that uh, people can be brutal on social media. So I really, I, I think about me as a 64 year old and I don't get my feelings hurt easy. So I think about young kids where everything that somebody says matters. And so that's when I've learned that again, you have to be careful about what you say, but I would also say that, you know, America needs to learn that you don't get to just say anything to anybody. It's just, you got to know what's appropriate and what isn't and what's respectful and what isn't. So you and I both attended Ozzo's BB26 premiere party in New York City. We, we unfortunately, we didn't get the chance to meet, but how did you enjoy the party? Oh, I loved it. It was a blast. Both nights, you know, we had something, uh, premiere night, and then the next night, we we really had a, a lot of fun. I remember seeing you there. I think I got a picture with you, I thought. I, I don't think we did, no. No, I could have sworn I actually have a picture of you. Um, but both nights were it was exciting it was fun it was exhausting because it's like you take one step and somebody else is standing right there and, and wants to talk and take a picture but just seeing one all the other cast members that have been on big brother and even people outside of big brother like survivor and and uh all the other shows what is it the challenge there were just so many other people there and just meeting all the different reality TV people and seeing them in their normal everyday life, holding conversations, getting to know them. And then the fans, of course, that just love all of these shows. It was an experience. It, it, it really was a wonderful experience. So what reality people were you most excited to meet? Um, it was, it was good to meet. I, the cookout, I got a picture with all of the cookout. So it was good to meet those guys and to see how connected after a couple of years, they really still are. They built a family within the six of them and they really have stayed very connected. And I love to see that. Um, seeing the people from our cast, it was good to see everybody show up. Uh, Mimi and and Blue and, and Jag and Matt and Riley and Corey and America. Uh, I, I'm missing somebody. Let's see. Who am I missing? Did you I say Matt? I got Matt and Jag and Matt, Jag, Mimi, Corey, Blue, America, me. I remember seeing a picture of all you guys. Yeah, we took a picture. It was it was really nice. It was it was we had fun. And then just seeing like it, I was surprised when I saw like a uh, Paul from yeah. several seasons ago, just to see him. I think I met somebody from the, there was a gentleman that was, he's been the oldest one to ever play Big Brother. So I got to meet him in person. That was good. Um, just anybody that you can meet 
and they've been they've played the show and they've been in that house and walked in and come out that door that really understands what you go through when you're inside. That's an experience in and of itself. It really is. And even all the other shows, um, meeting those people and realizing that um, it's a lot harder than it looks. You know, TV gives you snippets, but that 24 seven while you're in whatever area you're in, whatever show you're on, it's it's a lot more hard and brutal than people realize. It takes a lot out of you. So let's get into Big Brother 26. So who are your favorite house guests this season? You know, I've kind of shifted. Um, when I first went in the house, I I thought it was going to be Quinn, Angela, um, Kenny, and uh, Chelsea. And I've kind of shifted. I, Tucker grew on me, you know, Tucker, he, he was obnoxious there for a minute. Um, and again, he was just trying to get everybody to just engage and start playing their own game and said, okay, this week the house is voting out this week. So I, I understand what he was trying to do, but there were times where I think that he, he played a little bit too hard and he went too personal on attacking people. And that's where you have to be careful. Angela, the same thing. You know, I think Angela, the first week, I think Matt got a, a, a bad card dealt to him, you know, that crazy eyes and all of that. And I just think that he never really had a chance to show who he is. So I felt bad for him. Um, even Lisa, Lisa seemed to not connect the way she thought she was connected. Now I have to say my favorites are, I love Chelsea. I really do love Chelsea. Um, I like t -Core. I like Rubina. And I like Mackenzie. Mackenzie, she's had to grow on me because she, a lot of times she draws unnecessary attention to herself. She whines a lot. Um, she talks too much sometimes when she doesn't need to. When you're not on the block, stop talking about how you feel like you're not aligned with anybody and how you need to get connected and why isn't anybody talking game? Just be quiet, because you're not a threat. You're not on the block, who cares? Um, but I have, the, I have an appreciation for Mackenzie because of her perseverance. And when she has to win, she wins. And I love that. So are you rooting for the all girls thing to happen then? I'm rooting for the all girls. I don't think it's ever happened in Big Brother. And I want to see. Mackenzie, T. Core, Chelsea, and Rubina. I want that to be the final four. Yes, I the do. Most, the most women there's been in the end game was Big Brother 6. The final four was all women. So. Was it final four in, all, in six? Okay. And look how long ago that is. We're in 26. Yeah. That's 20 years ago. That's why I didn't remember. <laughs> so I would love to see it happen this year. Uh, I think that would be just phenomenal. It would be, it, it would be wonderful to see that happen, to see the women be able to stick together. We never seem to be able to stick together. We always think we got to bring the guys with us. Nothing against men. I don't want anybody to think that I'm a man hater because I ain't. I love me some men. But I'd love to see a group of females be able to have each other's back and carry it to the end. So what about Leah? Are you not including Leah in that group? No. And I, I... Leah hasn't really done a whole lot. She won the veto and she got to make a big move by taking Angela down and that's going to be her claim to fame. Um, but she's really kind of played, uh, she just, she doesn't feed you a whole lot of information about what she thinks. She just takes information and then spills the information to other people, sometimes uh, adding a spin to it, being a little bit dishonest in what she says. And so, no, I don't really, and, and I don't like the way she's used. And I, I, I'm not even going to say that. I just, no, I don't want Leah to be in those four. Nothing to get Leah personally, I'm talking straight game. So any comments, and this is what I want to say out loud, any comments that I make, it's strictly about gameplay. It's nothing about who these people are as personal individuals. I love them all. And what about Angela? No. I think that Angela, now I'm not going to say I'm mad at Angela because Angela has managed to stay all this time. And from week one, they've been talking about, we got to get Angela out. We got to get Angela out. And here Angela is still week eight. She's seven, eight. She's still in the house. But I don't think that Angela should go to the end. I think by the time they get to about seven, uh, Angela may go out this week. I, I'm banking Angela's going out this week. If they take chemo out, I think it's a mistake right now. I think they should move Angela out right now. And then honestly, next week, I think they need to go after that double eviction, Quinn and Leah. 
That's what well, I why think. Do, why do you think that they should evict Angela over chemo? Um, I think I, keeping the the trio of chemo and T Core and Rabina in the game together, the final eight, that's that's a problem. Well, yes and no, because again, they still have to win the HOH. They have to win the HOH, and then they gotta hope that whoever wins that veto doesn't destroy what they're trying to do. And so I don't mind the duels and the trios. I think when you can find a core and be able to stick with them, it, it shouldn't be a negative that you have an alliance that you stay true to. We we get hung up on that. We can't let the three stay because at some point they're going to go home. Somebody's going to go home. Um, I just don't think it's time to do it yet to be able to maneuver and get to where they want to go. Once they get down to like five or six, then then chemo got to go and Cam got to go and Quinn got to go. So I know you've been keeping up with the live feed a lot. Were you a live feed person before going on the show? Never. I had never watched the live feeds, me or my husband. And then I came home. In fact, when we were in the house, people are saying, do you think your husband's watching the live feeds? Oh, no. I said, we, we, we've we never done that. Came home. He was sitting in front of the TV all day, every day, watching live feeds, recording live feeds. He was able to show me everything that was said and done behind the scenes that I didn't even realize was going on. So now I watch the live feeds. Now, I don't sit on the computer all day, every day. I, I can't do that. But I do try to get in at least a couple hours every day. And I'm in particular about like after eviction night, I try to watch and see if I can stay on long enough to show after the HOH. If not, then definitely on Friday, I watch before NOM so I, I can figure out what direction I think they're going. I usually try to watch on Saturday when I know they hold the veto. And then, you know, Sunday is usually a quiet day. It used to, used to be for us. I've noticed with this season, these guys, they're Sundays, they're, they're battling almost like it's Tuesday or Wednesday. And it's like, you guys got to take a down day. You got to give your brain some <laughs> some quiet time. They don't really do that, though. I've noticed that. So what is watching the live feeds been like? Is, is there something that you would say that from watching the live feeds that people wouldn't know from just watching the show? Oh, absolutely. After having watched them from last season and seeing what production actually put on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. And then now just from watching them myself, I would say to everybody, if you're not watching the live feeds, you don't really know what's going on on Big Brother because you only know the side of a person that production wants to spin them to be. And a lot of times you miss some of the big, bigger, greater conversations and the conversations that show you who people really are. So I would say to anybody, if you have time to somehow, at least a couple hours a day, get in on those live feeds, it is definitely worthwhile and it will behoove you so that when you make these judgments, when you're picking America's fan favorite and all of that, you know, you shouldn't do that if you haven't watched live feeds, honestly. So someone I think I've heard that you've had strong opinions about was Joseph. What did you think about Joseph? I didn't care for Joseph's gameplay. And here's why. Joseph, Joseph was crazy enough to say out loud that, oh, this game is easy. I haven't really had to do anything. I just kind of sit back, lounge around, don't have to really try to win. And, you know, and, and in the end, I can do nothing and I believe I'm going to win. I, I'm not sure where Joseph got that from. He's comparing himself to Will. He is not a Will. <laughs> He was not a wheel. He's gone now. And simply because I think he literally believed that everybody loved him and he could literally do nothing and get to the end and they would pick him to win. That is the most foolish thing I've ever heard. Do you think what gave him this ego to him was that he wasn't nominated for like 50 days? Probably. I, probably because you have a tendency sometimes to believe that you're better than you are because you don't get nominated. But a lot of times there's just bigger threats in the house and they don't see you as somebody they have to worry about. But Joseph was, Joseph was doing some snaking too. He was, he was telling, he was telling a few lies. He was telling information to different people, spinning information. And again, he was another one of those that was good at asking a lot of questions, trying to get information out of you to go back and tell somebody else. But he never really told you what he thought. And it, that kind of reminds me of how Bowie Jane played like that. She did a whole lot of talking about, well, what do you think? And, what, and then you said, well, what do you think? Well, I'm just going to go with the house. So see, she didn't have no game. Now again, it got her to number three, 
But in the end, everybody knew she would never make it into those final two chairs. She was never a threat to anybody. Yeah, so T, T Cor and Matt, they're this season's uh, Georgia representatives. Have you connected with Matt at all since he also lives in Georgia? I have not. And when Matty Ice came here, um, I told him that I want the three of us, me, Matt, and Matt, to try to connect. And so the next time Matty Ice is here, I'm going to get the three of us together. I think I am going to go on on Matt, who's from here, his um, Instagram, though, and just say, hey, I'd love to connect with you. Meet him in Roswell. I live in Kennesaw. So we're only about 30 minutes apart from each other. So, yes, I do want to connect with him. And then when t comes out, I definitely want the three of us to try to get together and maybe even call up Cam from Macon or down there more Southern and get all of us together in the same room and do a, a question and answer or something, go somewhere and, and let, let people come out and just be in the room with us. I think that would be a, a great something. Does anyone on this cast remind you about yourself or anyone else from your cast? Uh, well, I've said up front, I thought Quinn reminds me of Corey. <laughs> I think, um, I think, Joseph and Leah kind of remind me Leah in a Leah Leah in a couple of different ways though. Joseph and and Leah kind of remind me of a Bowie Jane in that they just kind of sat back in their quiet, unfiltered floaters, um, just getting information and feeding it when they think it's necessary, but not really contributing. Um, they're not in a lot of discussions about strategy. And when they are, I believe they're fake discussions that other people are having with them to make them feel like they're aligned, but they're not really aligned. Um, let's see. I think T Core. T Core kind of reminds me in a roundabout way of a Sari, in the sense that she has a very great ability to connect to people. Everybody trusts her. She doesn't spill. And so with that regards, I do believe she has played a good game. She hasn't had to, I won't say do a whole lot because she's in a lot of strategic conversations with a lot of different people. So she's got her hands in a lot of pots. Same with Chelsea. Um, so I do, I applaud them for being able to be those people where they, 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 they work well in trying to they realize that you can't have one set of people that you talk to and just negate the rest of the house. You have to have a connection with everybody in the house. That's how you get to the end. That's how you win somebody's vote for that $750,000. Wow, the house guests were given the option to vote a 70th house guest into the game on premiere night. Remember they voted yes oh, yeah, or no yeah, for yeah, Ainsley? Yeah, yeah. What do you voted yes or no? For Ainsley? I... I don't know. I think I probably would have voted yes just to see how it was going to carry out. I was surprised that that I think only one person voted yes. Was it one? I think it was. I think it might have been one from one of the groups, and then it was like two or three from the other group because they were two groups. Remember? Yeah, because I was thinking that everybody said no except for one person, and I don't remember who it was. Everybody was afraid that why do I want the extra person? But again, you come into the house, you can't be afraid of competition because at some point everybody still got to go. Um, I probably would have voted Ainsley in. Yeah, but the first uh, up until Joseph, everybody evicted had said no to Ainsley coming to the game. So they said that's Ainsley's curse that everybody evicted said no to her coming to the game. Uh, <laughs> you never can tell. I mean, Ainsley played out. Um, I love the way she did the twists and the stuff that came with that. I love those twists better than the ones that we had. You know, the letting people get evicted and coming back and, you know, and, and the double eviction and then coming back. And then they, the whole week is built around those two people competing with just each other. Oh, that was foolishness. But I love the way they did it now where they had to put three people on the block because when you have to think of that third person and then it can shift everything because there's two ways to get out. Um, I like that. And I have to say that this is the first year where I think the competitions were geared more towards anybody can win. It doesn't matter how strong and physical you are because it was mental, um, risk, chance, and that's where you make the game more balanced for everybody. And so I, I do appreciate that, that they made a great effort to do that this year. And I think the competitions become a more equitable started in reindeer games. Did you watch reindeer games? Yes, yes. 
Yeah, so they had. I think they had a different. Uh, people made the challenges for that season. Everybody loved the challenges and Ranger games. So I think they brought that team back for this season. Yes, yes. I would love to do Ranger games. I could do that because one, it's only about two weeks, and I don't think they lived in the house. So the seventeenth person. Did you ever think that the seventeenth person that they were teasing was actually going to be a real person, just like last season, how they teased the seventeenth house guest and it was Sari? Because I, I never, it never crossed my mind that it'd be AI. I thought it'd be a real person the way they were hyping it up. I actually thought it was going to be a real person too. I think if they had decided they wanted it to be um, a 17th person, they may have had a person on standby to come in the house. But after they decided no, then they made it become the behind the scenes Ainsley. But I think if they had actually said yes and got the majority, I believe there was probably a person that was coming in the house. That's my theory now. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think of the AI arena? I like it. I, I think it was good for the game. Is that something that you want to see return in future seasons? Or you think this is just a, this season kind of twist? No, I think they should bring it back. And maybe they, maybe they have it where it comes in and goes out where they have it for two weeks and then it disappears for a week or disappears for two weeks. And then it comes back for three weeks or something. But I, I do believe that the way they have played the game this year, it made it more fair to everybody in the game. So I actually appreciated it. Who, who do you think that you would have aligned with if you were in the house? Mm. I think that I would have connected with. Actually, I, there's only a couple of people that I think I probably would not have connected with. And I think my not would have been probably. Joseph. Leah. Lisa. And maybe Angela. I think I could have worked with Angela had I been in the house to get to know Angela. I think us working together, believe it or not, and I don't say that, but I think I could have brought her down in the beginning and said, uh-uh, uh-uh, calm down. Don't, don't do that. That, that. that ain't a good look. I think she needed somebody to bring her down. How would you have navigated a big character like Tucker, like Angela? Uh, just do me. And if it resonated with them, fine. And if it didn't, you know, I might, me and Tucker may have been able to work together. And then, you know, he may have seen me as somebody that, you know, was very straightforward and been okay with that. And then a lot of times the people that are very direct and straightforward, they don't want to mess with somebody else who's that same person. So I don't know how we would have meshed. I'd like to think I could have got along with him because I'll be honest, that last week or so that he was in the house, I saw a different side of Tucker watching the live feeds. And I saw that soft side of Tucker. I saw that Tucker that really cares about people. I saw that Tucker that's vulnerable because of life experience. And I do believe he has a great genuine heart. And so I like Tucker. I I want to meet him in person and hold more conversations with him and, and pick his brain because I do think he seems to be a wonderful person. I don't know if you saw, but Oz is having another party on Thursday in New York City, the same place, and Tucker's going to be there. So I know I saw that. Of course, I'm not I can't fly back, but I'm I really am considering going back for a finale in Los Angeles. And so I'm I'm, I'm trying to make that happen. Um, but yeah, I, I want to meet Tucker and that's why I want to go back for finale night because I really want to meet this entire cast in person. Who do you think is currently playing the best game? I gotta say actually Chelsea. I really do think Chelsea and Chelsea and Tico. And I gotta say that I'm gaining an appreciation for Cam. Because Cam is now all of a sudden realizing he's becoming more engaged. He's now talking strategy. I think it really was his game to stay low key, not be seen as too much of a threat. Because again, he has the physicalness that people look at him and automatically see him as a threat. I think that was Matt's problem. They saw him right off the bat. Bam, he's a threat. He got to go. Um, and so I think he was trying to figure out how do I navigate that where, where I can just be quiet, not say too much. But again, he kind of went too quiet, didn't do enough. And that kind of was a put off to people. Now he is playing the game. Um, but I have to say from beginning to end, I actually, I think Chelsea, I think Rubina has played a game except for, I think she isolated herself too much when she got in Tucker's corner. 
And even though you create this alliance, you can't block everybody else because look, Tucker gone. And now she's trying to figure out how to recover from the Tucker being gone. And so that's that you, you have to think about that when you're aligning yourself. What's been the biggest surprise for you watching the new season? This this season seems to be very emotional. Everybody doing a lot of crying. It's like, oh my God. I I don't remember us doing that much crying in the house. And so I think some of it is fake. Um, but I do think some of it is real. And you're just sitting back saying, why is everybody so emotional? And I and and I and it it is it does drain on you emotionally, but when you make these decisions, you just own them and you keep on going. I, I think that has surprised me. It's like, everybody a crybaby this year, Lord. <laughs> Is there anything else, BB26, that you think we should touch on before we get into you and your season a little bit? Um, I think this next, I think the double eviction is going to really kind of line up how the end of the game is going to play out. I think depending on who goes home in the double eviction, that's going to almost dictate who's going to win this game. Back in your season, is there anything that you wish you'd have done differently? I actually wish that there's several things I wish I had done differently. A part of me, I wish I had waited to make alliances, waited a little bit longer to really get a feel for people to make alliances or get in solidified alliances. Um, I wish I hadn't made any final twos on day one. That was foolishness. Um, I wish that, I wish I would have picked up on the fact that Sari and Jared were mother and son. If I had just really honed in on that, I, sh I should have picked up on that, but I didn't. Um, I wish I wouldn't have voiced my opinion so much. <laughs> so talk so much. And aside from that, I mean, I don't, I just don't think I could have changed too much because I really did just try to be myself in the house. Have you watched back the season? I have. I have. It took me, I actually didn't finish it until the week before we went to New York for the premiere night. That was when I finished watching the show. So I would watch a week or two and then stop and then another week. And then I didn't just sit down and, you know. Was that intentional at all to finish right before you met up back up with your cast? No, it just played out like that. And then when I realized I really was going back, I did want to make sure that I had seen the whole season, but it wasn't anything that was planned out. I just, it, you know, I'd watch a couple of weeks and sometimes I would actually get get mad at what I saw and I'd say, oh, turn the TV off, you know, <laughs> something like that. But, you know, it, it, it that's just the way it played out. Has your perception of the game changed now that you're a viewer again rather than a player? Actually, I won't say now that I'm a viewer again, my perception of the game as a made it, my perception of the game changed after having been a player. So actually knowing what goes on inside the house and how it all plays out and then what gets shown on TV, that gives me a more real perspective and insight to the game and even outcomes of the game. And so I do see the game a lot differently. I'm curious on your thoughts on uh, the AFP of your season, Cameron. Did you suspect that he was going to be America's favorite player? Even though, yes and no. And, and here's why I say that. Yes, because I know that for whatever reason, we always like, America likes the bad guy. America likes the guy that's considered the villain. And Cam probably really was the villain of our season. Now, they they still kind of show it. Now, there's a lot of stuff that didn't get seen unless you watch live feet. Because on the camera, they really played him out as the all-American single dad who's raising his daughter and blah, blah, blah. And that that's what got to people. And he's fighting for his life every week. And, well, he had to do a lot of that just because of things that he did. You know, the first week when he was aligned with Riley and those guys and he said he loved Riley like a daughter and blah, blah, blah. And then he abandoned her just like that and came over to our side and then went and told all the secrets that he had from them. You know, we were watching that behavior and that's why nobody ever really trusted him in the house because we saw what he did the first couple of weeks. But 
you didn't, if you didn't watch feeds, you didn't get a sense of all of that. And then the weeks when he deliberately was, you know, the Izzy and me and just a lot of goofy stuff. And I'll be honest, I was actually, and again, I'm just talking gameplay now, but I was irritated when I found out about the accident that my brother had been in. And then that next day he turned around and still put me up on the block. And I just thought, okay, you showing me who you really are. So there was, there was a lot of things that made me say, I cannot believe, I actually thought it was going to be Matt or Sari. I really did. I thought it would be Matt or Sari. And those would have been obvious. You would have said, yay. Um, I have to say, I was surprised that Cameron got it. I really was. But again, because of how we seem to like the bad guy, was it totally surprising? No, it's like, you got to be kidding me. There you go. Sari was definitely what I voted for. So I, I was also shocked that Sari did not win. Yeah, yeah. So, how do you feel about the season of your win the winner of your season, Jag? The, the fact that he was evicted before you. Um, again, they made it a part of the gameplay, so you can't be mad at Jag. I mean, and Matt decided to use his power and and bring him back, and so I, we had several opportunities to evict Jag, and we didn't. So you can't be mad at Jag for being able to then go on and win all those comps and get to the end. And in the end on finale night, he was able to sell himself where Matt wasn't able to sell himself. If Matt had given a better speech and if Matt had owned some of the moves that he made and said, there was no leader and I did it, we did it everything together and nobody was in, no, see Jag owned it. No, I'm the one that came up with this, this and this. I was running the house. I was, and so that's what made people say, you know what? He's right. He really does deserve to win. I mean, I can't, I'm not mad. Jag took me off the block twice with a veto. So. <laughs> well, you still voted for Matt to win though, right? I did. And only because I just thought the tone of Jag's speech at the end came across as a little bit abrupt to me. And even though I like somebody who stands for what they stand for, I just think well, and see, and here's what I also know is that I, Jag and Matt had had supposedly made a pact where they weren't going to throw each other under the bus on finale night, and Matt stuck to that that pact, and Jag did, and Jag threw Matt under the bus and said Matt didn't do nothing. I was running the whole train, <laughs> and even though I knew that because that's how I ended up making it to number four versus three. I knew that I had to go through Jag in order to stay in that house because I knew Sari was working through Matt, but I knew that Jag was controlling Bowie Jane and Matt in their thought process on how the game should play out. So I knew the only way I could stay in that house longer than Sari was to work through Jag. So how do you think that people would rank Jag as a winner, being the fact that he's the only winner to be evicted from the game? There's a lot of people who who think that that really was unfair gameplay. I mean, he got evicted 10-0. Um, but again, the, the house made that part of the game. I mean, look at Cam and Jared got to come back. What if one of them had won? Yeah. And so you can't get mad at them because after they get evicted 10-0, that's when production decides, oh, we have this power in play. And if everything goes right, he'll get to come back anyway. Yeah, the, the, part, the part that I can't get over is that the season was only 100 days. It was only longer because of the writer strike. So they had to throw in some twists to extend the game. So the way I look at it is Jag won Big Brother only because there was a writer strike. Yeah, One thing yeah. led to another. And yeah, that's you could I say that. Because they could have done rather than have just with his power gets to pick somebody to come back. I, that's the piece I don't like. I would rather have seen them do some battle backs and let people have to have to win to come back versus their bestie in the house just saying I, I, i'm gonna bring him back if he loses yeah and, and the zombie twist was horrible I and mean, how, how was life in the house for a week when you guys didn't have to do anything it really was terrible because everybody's downstairs no it, it was really kind of boring because we were just kind of waiting out to see what the comp was going to be between jared and cam and that just wasn't a good something it, it, they it, it they could have done that competition in one night. Like they didn't in need one people. night, they could have made it be over in in a in a day or two by minimum. 
So I'm not sure. Well, again, like you said, the writer's strike. So they were trying to find things, but they, again, they knew that writer's strike was there. And I have to wonder, and again, I'm not putting down production because I think the show was still good. I love Big Brother, but I have to wonder if they were selective in when they decided to implement those uh, twists, knowing who they were trying to bring back in the house. I don't know. You, ha you have to wonder that. And I think Cameron was probably a production favorite of why they threw in the zombie twist when they did. So Exactly. Exactly. And Jared being Ceri's son. And so that worked out perfect where, you know, they said, well, Cameron went out now. And again, they're hearing all these conversations, everybody in the diary room. So they have a feel about what's going to happen. And so they deliberately did that at that time to bring those two back in the house. And all of you thought you had a great night. You evicted two copies in one night. It was going great. And then they walk right back in. And then they walk right back in. That's why, like, for instance, this season, they've gotten pretty much rid of dang near all their comp beasts now. And so by getting rid of the Tuckers and the Kinneys and the uh, Cedrics and everybody else is gone because Joseph wasn't a comp beast. Joseph didn't win. <laughs> Joseph didn't win that. Um now it's open game. It's open field to anybody. Anybody has the opportunity to win this game now. So how do you think that your season would go if you ran it back? If they put the 16 of you in the house again right now, how do you think the season would go? Oh, I think you see it play out a whole lot different, honestly. I I think you I think you'd see Jared, Jared and Matt probably gone earlier. I think Riley would stay longer. I think Suri and Jared would go earlier. And I think uh, Bowie Jane would go earlier. And I think you'd see some other people stay further. Uh -huh. What about what about like uh, Izzy or Mimi? How do you think that they would do? Oh, I think Mimi would stay longer. I think Izzy, I'm not sure because Izzy, Izzy's downfall was Izzy played too emotional. She's another one that played emotional. And again, that, that people start wondering, oh, is she going to explode? Is she going to say something? Is she going to do something? Um, so I don't know. She might she might land a few more weeks longer, but, but it depends on who she aligns herself. If she's still aligned with Sari and Jared, I think she goes the same time she goes. What about what about Heisen? I think Heisen would last longer. Because that, if I had to say, even though it was a huge move, it was a big move, and we completely blindsided him, you know, on the backside, maybe we should have kept him longer. I don't know how that would have played out for my game. Because um, I actually connected with Heisem. He was the first person I actually talked to out of the people in the house. I, I walked past Sari and said, I know you. But as far as everybody else, Heisem was the person that I stood over in the corner with and talked to. Um, over by the door when we first got in there. And he really was a nice guy. I enjoyed his company. He was hilarious. He kept us laughing all the time. But he just, he played so hard. I don't know if he would have lasted, honestly, because it's almost like he was in overdrive. He wasn't sleeping. I mean, he was just living, eating, breathing it all day long. He's memorizing every inch of the house. And we kept saying, hi, some calm down it's only week one it's only week two <laughs> so who have you kept in touch with from your season pretty much everybody there's only a handful of people that i haven't really been in contact with and that would be bowie jane uh and bowie jane and kirsten and actually at some point or another i've i've talked to everybody else yeah and that includes Surrey. Yeah, uh huh. I've actually talked to the talked to Sari on the phone, uh, multiple times. So, have you been asked to do any other shows? Is there any other shows that you'd be interested in doing? I have not personally been asked, but I would love to do. There's a slew of them. I mean, in the Traders, the Trust, Anonymous, the Mole, the Circle. I would love to do any of those. Out, so they've got so much stuff out there now. Um, but again, these are all st shows where it's about a month max that you're doing this show. It's not a hundred days. <laughs> if, you, if you had the option, would you want to play Big Brother again or would you want to do a different show? I'd want to do a different show. Now, if they if they were to actually ask, I, 
I wouldn't want to do it if it was a hundred days again, I don't think, unless it was a, a big brother, um, all stars or something like that. But even then I think they do the show shorter. And if they had it where it is now with the AI arena and the game and the, the competitions are more tied towards anybody can win is chance, blah, blah, blah. Then I would do it. Do you have any advice for a future house guest based on your own experience? I would say go in the house and be your genuine self. You have to learn how to just let your guard down and let people see you for who you are. That's how people connect to you. Get to really know people. You can't talk game all day, every day. You have to actually really have a genuine interest in all the house guests. That's where your connections come from. That's where you gain true friendships. And when the friendships come, the alliances come. And so step step out of just thinking game, 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 strategy, strategy. You can't ever forget that. But you have to learn to just connect to the people on a personal level. And then, like I said, be your authentic self because people can see through role playing, gimmicks, role playing, trying to be somebody that you're not. Uh-uh, don't do that. It, it doesn't work. Was Big Brother 25 your first time applying to the show or had you applied many times before? That was my first time. First time at the end of the season of 24, I said, when I retire, I'm going to apply, apply for Big Brother. And I had retired that June. And in October, when the season was over, September, October, I applied. And in March, I got my first text, email, what have you. And it just went from there. That's, that's awesome that you got on the first try. Lots of people apply for 20 years and they never yeah. get on. <laughs> they saw something in my big personality. <laughs> so has your your personal life or your career been impacted at all by your time in the Big Brother? It has. I mean, um, it's made me get more out of the everyday whole hum. And I'm really trying to be creative and think about, like I said, a platform and what kind of platform I want and what I want to do with it. And I've always felt like I'm a uh, good communicator and one, and I've always been a voice. You know, I'm the person that says in the room what everybody else is thinking, but doesn't want to say. So I have to figure out now how to take that something and make it turn into something, something that, you know, that's beneficial and not just beating my lips all day, every day, talking about nothing. Because as much as I love Big Brother, I still think there's a bigger platform out there as far as being a motivational person uh, with regards to just people's personal lives or spiritual life, being the best version of yourself, that kind of something. That's where I want to take this. And so who is your Big Brother 26 winner pick and who do you want to win versus who you think will win? Um... I'm still, I'm still, I think Chelsea has a good chance to win. And I think t -Core could win. And McKenzie, Chelsea, t -Core, McKenzie. I actually would want any of those three. And I think all of them can win. Rubina, I'd like to see her win. I don't know if she's going to get all the way to the end like that. But I do think that Chelsea, t -Core, and McKenzie all have a chance to get to the end and win. I think Quinn, even though I wouldn't mind seeing him win, I don't think he's going to get that far. I think in the next couple of weeks, they're going to get rid of Quinn. I don't did think you, Angela's going to go to the end. Did you make a preseason winner pick? At the beginning of the season, um, I think Chelsea, I, I think I had Chelsea and Quinn as two of my picks in the beginning. And I also had Kenny. I have to say, Kenny surprised me coming in, and I'm looking at the fact, one, that he is a prior cop or is a cop, you know, physical, and he seemed like he'd be seasoned and be a good strategist. I was surprised when he got in the house and instantly he wants to go home. Now, I, I, no shame in his game if that's how he felt, but I'm just thinking, you when, when they tell you up front how many days you're going to be in there. So for him, particularly in the field that he's in, cops are away from home a lot and away from family. They're used to these long hours, long shifts, all that kind of stuff. So I still have to say I was surprised that he got in there and then he just kept talking about, I, 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 I don't care if I go, I miss my family. 
that surprised me because I think he could have gone a long way. But I also noticed he didn't really make a big effort to engage with people the way he should have. Yeah, so my, my winning pick for the season was actually Matt, so that didn't go well. But the previous three <laughs> seasons, the previous three seasons, I had picked all correctly, Xavier, Taylor, and Jag. So my followers were, you know, ranking on me. Oh, you picked the last three winners. Then the next season, you picked the first boot, so... Who did you pick last year? You said Matt. I, I picked. And Jag? I picked. I picked Jag last year as, as the winner. Okay. Okay. At, at preseason, right off the bat. Yes, I, I did it the last three seasons. I picked Jag. I picked Taylor, and I picked Xavier. So, what made you pick Jag? I mean, I just thought he was going to be like the normal. Uh, you know, he's going to win some competitions. I thought there would be bigger physical threats in him that could be targeted, like a camera, like a map before him. I thought he would. People would like him, so I thought he would skate to, like, the final six, and at that point, he'll just win every competition. That's kind of what happened. Okay, and then what about Taylor? Um, I thought that – this is two years ago. I'm trying to remember exactly my thought process. But I thought that she was going to have a great social game like she did, and I thought she wasn't really going to ever touch the block. That was wrong, but – um, <laughs> I just I, – I guess I have a thing for picking winners. Not this year, but – Yeah, yeah, yeah. You never know. I mean, again, the, the twists play into how things play out and you just never know the strategy of other people. I mean, who would have thought that Leah was going to bring Angela down this week? Who would have thought that Tucker was going to volunteer three times to go up as a pawn? I mean, just all that. Who would have thought Cedric was going to volunteer? So it's all these crazy things that you don't anticipate that people would do that really isn't smart gameplay that somehow lands them out the door. That's why I always say to people, no, you don't ever volunteer to sit on the block thinking your game is so good, you can't get voted out. The minute you get that comfortable, you will go home. So do you have any upcoming projects or events that you're excited to share with your fans? Um, I'm, I'm, again, I'm really trying to figure out how to stand up a podcast and it's really because of some personal things going on where I haven't been able to do it so far. Um, but just, I'm just trying to live life to the fullest. I, I really am just do whatever comes my way. I'm, I take life, you know, a day at a time. I am kind of a planner. So I do like to try to plan and try to, you know, put put goals into practice and you know, help lay them out. But I don't have any real big, I want to travel. I want to enjoy my family. I want to keep living life and I want to help others and serve others. And however I can do that, that's what I have planned in. You know, I, I do hope to get on some more game shows and I am going to say that. I do hope to get on some more shows where I can go in and compete and, and maybe compete a little bit better where I, I show that I don't have to rely on other people to save me and all that kind of stuff. So I would like to be able to do that. And again, going back to that age is but a number. Um, so that kind of stuff. But yeah, it just one day at a time. And maybe people see you in LA for the finale, right? Yes. And maybe they see me in LA for the finale. That's my goal. All right, Felicia, thank you so much for joining me. It was a pleasure to catch up with you and I'm looking forward to seeing what you do next. All right. Thank you. And have a good one. I appreciate it. Thank you.